Now today we want to look at the theme of the church this year, Greater Works Through Greater Love. And the portion of scripture I want to read is from John chapter 14, verses 12 to 15. They are, these are words of Jesus Christ and he's speaking to his disciples. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I've been doing and they will do even greater things than this because I'm going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ, whom you, in whom and through whom we have. And we ask today for your Holy Spirit to enlighten us, illuminate the scripture to us, and speak into our hearts that we might rise up in faith, go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit, and not only do the works of what Jesus did, but even greater works. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as we look at the scripture, one of the things you need to do is to look at the immediate context. Now, if you read X, uh, sorry, John 14, it starts with these words, verse 1, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Uh, be, you believe in God, believe also in me. Uh, Jesus had told the disciples that he's going away. I mean, he called them to be with him, and now he says that uh, the time has come, now I'm going away. So their hearts were troubled. And that is why he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. One of the words that I want to bring for you this, as you begin this year is this word, no matter what happens in the world, what happens in your life, what happens in church, believe in God, believe also in Jesus Christ. That is the most important thing for us. And therefore, as much as you might read the news also read the word of God daily because that is how you build belief or faith in God and in Jesus Christ. And so as he was speaking, uh, he, you find that uh, they were troubled and he was saying, I'm going away. And then I think this Thomas who asked, uh, tell us the way. And, and he said, I am the way and the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Then Philip asks, oh, just show us the Father and, and then it'll be okay with us. Then he, Jesus told Philip, have you not been with me long enough that when you see me, The, the immediate context here is that Jesus is going, you see that in verses 1 to 10, but he tells them, while I'm going, even though you are sad, but I got work for you to do. <laughs> I got work for you to do. So verses uh, 11 to 15, he is talking about that the disciples should continue the work. Okay. Yes, I'm going, but you continue the work work. And then the last part of the whole chapter, how are you going to do it? It is the Holy Spirit. At the end, the entire scripture or the entire passage is about the greater works that you are going to do has to be done in the person and the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the immediate context if you want to look at that passage. These greater works that, that God has asked us to do is embedded in this context that Jesus is going away. We need to continue the works, but we continue these works in the power and in the person of the Holy Spirit. That's, that's how it is. That's, that's the immediate context. But there is a broader context. The broader context is simply this. Because you read in Mark chapter 3, Jesus had called his disciples that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have authority over 
the demons. But in Luke, he calls them, he says when morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them whom he also designated apostles. Now this is very important. He is not just speaking to any person or any disciple. He is speaking to apostolic men. That means those whom he wants to send out. Now I want you to think about this. If I were to have a basketball and I'm at the basketball court, I expect basketball players to be on that court. Do you follow? If other people come and join me who are not basketball play players, I will ask them, what are you doing here? So here, when, when Jesus is speaking to his disciples, he is talking to apostolic men and women, as it were, men here in this, in this case. But if you want to, if you don't like the word apostolic man, uh, he's talking to workers. <laughs> when he says, do greater works, he has to do That is that broader context we need to understand. Now, I know we are a congregation of people and we might say, hey, I'm not the person, but it is the Holy Spirit who can transform us into workers. Amen? Amen. Work has to be done by workers. <laughs> if you're not a worker, you can't do that. I think the greatest, I, I, I see this, the greatest challenge the church has is lack of workers. Not lack of members, but lack of workers. How does a member become a worker? It has to be through the work and the person of the Holy Spirit. So that is the broader context. So during this course of the year, your leaders will be working with you. How do you transform uh, to be workers? Now, if you see the congregation today, we are structured for worship. We are called to worship. And, the, and every Sunday that you gather, we are structured for worship. Unfortunately, we are not structured for work or witness. That one, so that has to be worked out from Monday through Saturday. But this structure is only for worship. Happens, every Sunday you come here, worship happens. But what structure, how should we organize ourselves so that we could work the works of Jesus Christ? I'll give you a hint. It is your small group. It is your connect group. It is your cell group. That is the structure for you to use to become Workers. Okay, we continue. That is the broader context. You need to understand that. Otherwise, you will think, oh, only certain people can do, others cannot. No. The third context here is what I call thematic context or purpose context or the book context. If you look at the entire uh, Gospel of John, the works of God point to Jesus Christ that the lost may believe in him as the son of God, and by believing him, they might have eternal life. You read that in John 20, verse 31. It says, but these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. That means the words, the works, and even greater works, are means of bearing witness to Jesus Christ. At the end of all these greater works through greater love is to witness for Jesus Christ. That's it. That means it should translate into evangelism, disciple making, and church planting in those terms, if I want to say it. There is a purpose. The purpose is that we bear witness to Jesus Christ. Can you move it? All right. Now, as I said, the immediate context, the entire passage has got to do one thing. The works that he talked about, in fact, he said, do not be troubled. And he, at, at the end, he says, I'll give you peace. How does the peace come? By the Holy Spirit. How are you going to do the works? By the Holy Spirit. How are you going to pray? By the Holy Spirit. How are you going to love? Holy Spirit. Right, so the Spirit has the power to transform us as workers. Believe me, it is the Holy Spirit that will transform you to be powerful workers and powerful witnesses for Jesus Christ. You cannot do it by yourselves. 
It is only by the Spirit of God. Amen? So he is not giving you a task or an assignment and say, hey, figure it out yourself. No, he gives us the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is also given as, as the comforter. Why comforter? Because they were, their hearts were troubled because Jesus was going away. You know, he is the comforter. He's also the helper. He's also the spirit of truth. So the Holy Spirit is the key. And so, as we look at this portion of scripture, I have three words for you. Just three words. Uh, next slide, please. Just three words. Faith, prayer, love. Verse 12 talks about faith. Believe in me. Verse 13 and 14 says, ask me, prayer. Verse 15 says, love me. I want you to note, believe in me, ask me, and love me. And, and let's look at the first one. Next slide, please. Power through faith. Now, the word power means the ability to do work. Uh, the physics definition is power is equal to the rate of work done. Huh? So power is basically is the ability to do work. So that power comes through faith. And in verse 12, I like to read verse 12 because this is very powerful. He, he says here, <clears throat> he said, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than this because I'm going to the Father. Two things. You know, he said, you will do the things that I do. You know, people tend to learn better through an example, by following an example, than by merely giving an instruction. Do you follow? It's, so he said, he's already an example. He was doing these works and he said, you will do these works and they've watched him do. In fact, they were with him when he did these works and he said, you'll do even greater works. And interestingly, he says, you'll do greater works because I'm going to the Father. How does that fit in? Actually, if you read in verse 16, he says, and I'll ask the Father and he'll give you another advocate to help you and with you forever, the spirit of truth. So the, the, the power through faith to do greater things comes through the Holy Spirit. In fact, in Jesus did was in the power of the Holy Spirit. So greater works that you want to do has to be in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the person of the Holy Spirit. Now he, you know, one of the things in, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit can, uh, comes upon you and you will be a witness. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and to the ends of the earth this is the greater witness, a worldwide witness. Jesus' witness was confined to Galilee and Jerusalem and Judea and maybe parts of Samaria. But the greater works that you are going to do would be worldwide witness. But that has to be through the Holy Spirit. It has to be through the Holy Spirit. The second thing he said was, You'll receive power through prayer. Now, this is very, very important. You want to receive the power of God, it is through prayer. I'm glad that you prayed during this uh, pre-service prayer. There is power in prayer. Let me tell you an experience that I had. Very early in my Christian life, I, actually, I led in worship. Do you, do, do you believe it? The first time I led in worship was very good. <laughs> so they led, asked me to lead it a second time, you know, after, course of, after a few weeks. And this time, when I led the worship, it was a disaster. Because I was singing a hymn, four stanzas. By the time I came to the second stanza, the congregation stopped singing. When I came to the third stanza, only the Pianist was accompanying me. And when I came to the fourth stanza, only I was singing. They couldn't follow me. I was singing out of tune. 
I mean, it was so bad after the service and all that, nobody spoke to me. That's even worse. I felt like running out, digging a hole and burying myself. In fact, the, the following Sunday, I didn't even want to come to church. But I remember that evening when everything was done, a friend of mine pulled out a little leaflet, in fact, a booklet written by E.M. Uh, uh, e. Bounds. And the title was Power Through Prayer. You see, the first time when I was really seeking God, so I got all the songs. He says uh, that in verse 13, he says, I, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And then he repeats that. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Now, when he says anything, it doesn't mean anything. It means those things that he asks you to do. But how do we know these things to do? First of all, we know it from the scriptures. By the way, when we read the scriptures, the scripture of the Spirit too, because the scriptures are inspired by the Holy Spirit. Yeah? We say the word of God, but the word of God is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so when you read that, it is so the words become alive for you. So what are the things that he had done? So the things that he talks about are those already here. And the second thing about this, the thing is that he said, anything that you ask in my name, I will do it. But he's not here. He does it through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of revelation, a spirit of enlightenment. He is the one who shows you the, the, the things that are going to do. For example, I was in a meeting once uh, in, in Kuching. I think it's 2000, 2014 maybe. And before I went up the pulpit, I, I saw some a person who was to be healed and that person was having epilepsy. I, I, I saw, you know, I saw it. How did I see? That is the Spirit of God. He revealed. The Holy Spirit is a revealer. And so, as I, when I went up, and I, there was a time for prayer, and people came out for prayer, especially for healing. But God still showed me this, this, uh, this picture. So at the end, I said, is there someone here who has got epilepsy? God wants to heal you. And this lady came running out. To the front and she said you know I have been praying that God will deliver me out of this epilepsy and of course when she came here the power of God came upon her and she was healed and set free again so when he said prayer it is in the realm of prayer that the Holy Spirit shows you what are the things number two the Holy Spirit is a spirit of prayer wow that I like that one the Holy Spirit is a spirit of Prayer. When we pray in tongues, that is the prayer language. That is the prayer language. Pray in tongues and you see the power of God coming upon you. And so, when he say greater works, it is by the Spirit. When you talk about prayer, it is by the Spirit. Now, it's very interesting to know, it is by prayer that you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah? And that is very powerful. You know those days, what are the greater works of, of, of FGA? You know what are the greater works? Every time we preach, the first call that we give is for salvation. Those who want to receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior. The second altar call is those who have not been filled with the Holy Spirit, you come out, we will pray for you and you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. The third altar call is we pray for healing. This is a standard altar call for years. Then something happened. We put all of this aside. This is a standard thing. Our mission trips are standard. These are the three things we always do. Salvation, baptism of the Holy Spirit, and healing. But how do this baptism and, and salvation, I'm sorry, the healing comes? Prayer, 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 prayer. Power through prayer. Power through prayer. There was a, a student which we led to a student group. University students, we led, to, led them to Barrio on a mission trip. I was leading them. 
but I actually get all of them to participate. So there was one village that evening, and we asked one of the tertiary students to speak. His name is Janang, but today he is a successful businessman and engineer and entrepreneur in Sarawak. And uh, that time he was an engineering student in MU. And I said, Janang, you're going to speak. And but one of the things we did was we prayed. We prayed, prayed throughout the night. We prayed, prayed in dance, prayed. And so when he went to speak, he had only three points. Number one, Barrio has sinned. Oh. Number two, Barrio has sinned. Conclusion, Barrio has sinned. I, I was like, I don't want to look anymore. You know? I said, what is he speaking? Introduction, Barrio has sinned. The body content, Barrio has sinned. Conclusion, Barrio has sinned. And I said, oh no, because we all were seated here, see, on the stage. And then to make matters worse, he made altar call. Oh, I, 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 I don't want to look now, you know, I, mean, I He made altar call now. Same three altar call. And then I closed my eyes, and then I opened my fingers to see who one lady came out. She had a problem with the food. So I quickly went down to pray, you know, and I closed my eyes to pray. Because like, <laughs> I don't want to see whatever happened. But when I opened my eyes, the place was full of people. Revival broke out. Power through prayer. My friends, you want revival? I tell you just one key. It is prayer. And the Holy Spirit will help you. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. And so he says, ask me. Then the third thing is, power through love. He said, if you love me, keep my commands. In verse 23 of chapter 14, he says, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. Now, love is manifested as obedience. How to show love to the Lord? By obedience. Now, by the way, your worship is also very powerful. Worship is a means also by engaging uh, uh, with the Lord and the Holy Spirit moves and He can pour His love into our hearts. In fact, in Romans 5, verse 5, He says, God has poured His love. He did not just give His love. He has poured His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Again, the Holy Spirit. And then the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the first one is love. So, in, it's again, the key is the Holy Spirit. But I like this one, what John says in 1 John 4, 12. He said, no one has seen God. But if you love one another, then God becomes visible. Here, in your connect group, when they see you loving one another, then you become visible. So again, it is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. Next, please. Okay. You know, it says here three words. Three words, faith, prayer, and love. The simpler versions are Believe in me, ask me, and love me. It means relationship. It is our relationship with Jesus Christ that enables us to do great works or greater works. And this we do through the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spiritual presence of Jesus Christ. Amen. Next. You know, the whole point of the message is simply this. The works of God and even the greater works point us to Jesus Christ who gave his life for you and me. And by believing in him, our sins are forgiven and we receive eternal life. But what does all this mean to us? The last slide. After going through all this, you know, the first thing I believe what God is speaking to us is let us return to our first love. Let us return to our first love. Let us come to that place of spending time with Jesus Christ. Again, by the Spirit of God. Number two, let us revitalize our prayer life. 
revitalize our prayer life. And number three, let us renew our trust in the Lord. Let us renew our trust in the Lord. Again, all these are in and through the power of the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, I had said, the word for us is believe in God, believe also in Jesus Christ. Let me add the other one, believe in the Holy Spirit. Believe in the Holy Spirit. And that, I believe, is the word for us for the rest of the year. 